Good morning everyone. I welcome all of you to today's science class. So children we have completed the previous chapter that was going on that is getting to know plants. And today we are going to take up a new chapter that is the body movement. And it is a very interesting chapter because in this chapter we will be learning about how movement takes place in our own body in your body yes so what are we going to learn in this chapter so we will be learning about human body and its movement we'll learn about joints we'll learn about the types of joints and there we will be learning about immovable or fixed joint movable joints and therein we'll be learning about the hinge joint ball and socket joint pivot joint gliding joint and also we'll be learning about partially movable joint that means there are joint which are fixed and they do not move there are joints which are movable and there are also joints which are partially movable so we will be learning about all the types of joints which our body has we'll also be learning about the bones cartilage tendons and muscles also we'll learn about the skeleton system and there we'll learn about the skull rib cage backbone bones of upper and lower limb and about the girdles also we'll be covering the topic of movement of animals that means other than human so there we'll be learning about the movement of some animals like earthworm snail cockroach birds fish and snakes so this is what we are going to learn in this chapter and for today's class we will be learning only about movement and locomotion and also about the different types of movement so after today's class you will be able to understand and you will be able to define what is movement and locomotion you will be able to differentiate between movement and locomotion and also you will be able to identify the types of movement that takes place so let's begin our class so here in this picture what do you see you see that the people in this picture are having a marathon race yes they are moving from one place to another with the help of what with the help of their legs yes not only the legs they are also moving their hands now let us take an example that you go from your house to school every day yes so every day you are going from your house to school so when you are going what part of your body is moving which part so your legs are moving your hands are moving you look here and there your eyes are moving your neck is moving yes so most of the part of your body is moving so even if you are riding a bicycle your legs are moving yes and of course your hands should be straight otherwise you will go the other way yes so your hands should be straight but your legs should be continuously moving and your eyes neck should be moving also yes not much but it should be moving looking here and there so that you can safely ride the bicycle similarly if we take the example of uh going to school by a car so if you are driving that means most of your part is moving but if you are sitting of course you as a student you will be sitting and going to school by car and your parent or your father or your mother will be driving the car so the different parts of your uh, mother or father who is uh, driving will move but very less movement of your body will take place because you are sitting yes because you are sitting you are not driving so less movement of your body will take place but the body of your uh, 
mother or father who is driving the movement will take place more in their body yes so we do various kinds of activities throughout the day and we see that different parts of our body move like in this case the people are running and then their legs are moving their hands are also moving now let's take another example so here what do you see that the boy and the girl is jogging in a park yes jogging in a park so this also involves movement of the body swimming yes i know that many of you like swimming also so swimming is also an activity where movement of the body is taking place yes here you can see the children are skipping a row yes so they are skipping and here also movement is taking place even here the child is jumping so here also movement is taking place yes here you can see that the ch children are jumping and they have different posture of their body and our body is also flexible with little bit practice you can do the back bridge yes so you can do the back bridge and as since our body is quite flexible but we need some type of practice yes okay now the question is that what is movement we have seen so many examples of movement so the question arises next is what is movement yes so now look at this so you'll see that the eyes are blinking so what is this this is the movement of the eye yes so the blinking of the eye time to time is an example of movement but what is actually movement movement is when the living organism moves a body part or parts different parts without a change in the position of the organism or it the position can also be changed when movement takes place either the different parts will move or the organism can also change its place so that is what we understand by movement yes now look at this so here the person is walking yes so as he is walking you will see not only his legs are moving his hands are also moving an example of movement here you can see the birds are flapping their wings it's also an example of movement yes they are flapping their wings and they are flying so this is an example of movement here you'll see that the person is running yes so uh, the person is running that means what the movement of the body is taking place now another word is also associated with movement that is locomotion now what is locomotion many of you might be thinking that locomotion and movement is same but both of this are not same not exactly same yes so locomotion is a little bit different from movement so how is it different locomotion is when the movement of a part of the body leads to change in the position and location of the organism yes so it will lead to the change suppose you are at point a so you are at point a and from point a with the help of the movement of your legs you are moving to point b fine so this movement is called locomotion that means due to the movement of some part of your body your location is changing yes so your position is changing from one point to another so this is locomotion yes so both are movements move yes so movement of the body parts and locomotion are movement but there is a slight difference so now let us look at the difference between movement and locomotion so 
the major difference between locomotion and movement is that in movement can happen with or without moving away an organism's original position that means we can move our fingers yes we can move our fingers we can blink our eyes yes and then as i'm talking i'm moving my lips yes so that is movement and it is not necessary that the position of the organism will change in movement yes so without the change in the position of the organism movement can take place on the other hand locomotion is moving away from the original position of an organism yes so when an organism moves from one place to another that means the movement of the legs when you are walking the movement of the legs is leading to the change in the position change in the position of your body from one location to another so that movement is called locomotion it can be voluntary or involuntary like voluntary means if we want to write we move our fingers if we want to jump we move our legs yes so similarly there are involuntary movements also like movement of the heart the heart keeps on beating day and night involuntarily we cannot control the movement of the heart the contraction and expansion of our stomach and the intestine we cannot control it so those movements which takes place and is uh, not under our control we cannot control its movement is called involuntary movement so movement will consist both voluntary if we want to move our hands and involuntary the movement of the internal organs yes in those are what involuntary movement so both the movement can either be voluntary or it can be in uh, involuntary but locomotion will always be voluntary because if you want to go from your home to school yes you have to move your legs and you have to go to school yes that means in that process what is happening you are changing your position so if you are not voluntarily walking and going to school yes of course nobody can take you fine so that means you have to voluntarily walk to your school fine so locomotion is the change of the position of the organism from one point to another and it has to be voluntary yes so locomotion is a voluntary movement the movement takes place at biological level inside our body also movement is taking place when we eat food the food enters our stomach through the esophagus or the food pipe so movement is taking place yes so it is taking place at biological level it is also taking place in the cells but the locomotion takes place at organism level that means the whole organism has to move from one point to another another difference between movement and locomotion is that all movement is not locomotion so we sit in one place and we are moving our hands we write we are writing on in our copy yes so that is movement but in this movement locomotion is not taking place that means the you are not moving from one place to another you are not taking your copy and me in the meanwhile you are writing also and you are walking also you are not doing that you are sitting in one place and you are writing that means your hands are moving but locomotion is not taking place so all movement is not locomotion but all locomotion our movement that means whenever we move from one point to another what is happening the movement of our legs is taking place and as we walk to the other point the movement of our hands is also taking place so in locomotion what is happening movement is also taking place but in movement it is not necessary that locomotion 
takes place yes so this is the difference between locomotion and movement now let's study about the types of movement different animals exhibit different types of movement like crawling creeping jumping skipping slithering walking galloping you might have heard these words yes the horse is galloping the snake is slithering yes the lizard is crawling fine so in uh, the ch children are jumping yes the children are skipping fine so these are all different types of movements which we do in our day-to-day -day life yes uh, we do or maybe we see other animals doing that yes so here is an example of animal which crawls yes so crawl like uh, animals like uh, a spider crawls yes then beetles also crawl lizards crawl yes so here you can see that the spider is crawling yes spider is claw, craw, crawling and when an animal crawls they use their limbs to move yes you might have seen small babies which uh, those who don't know how to walk yes say around uh, uh, babies those who are only uh, 10 to 11 months yes what they do they cannot walk and as a result they crawl on their knees yes so that's what we understand by crawling fine so next is creeping so creeping you can see that quietly moving yes quietly moving so this type of movement is called creeping fine then you can see a snake slithering how does it moves so it slithers so this movement is called slithering and usually slithering is seen in animals which do not have legs yes so this is slithering now here you can see the galloping of the horse so when animals run producing sound yes that is called galloping yes so here you can see the horse is galloping and you know that when horse gallops sound is produced yes so here you can see a child skipping and moving yes so you also sometimes move like that yes when you are in a very happy mood yes you also skip and you maybe you sing a song and then you move so this movement is called skipping here the man is walking fine so all of us walk every day and so this is what we have for today's class so now let us summarize okay we have learned that our body is capable of performing a wide variety of simple and complex functions it is able to do so why because of the internal structure that facilitates its movement in the picture you can see that a child is drawing and he is using his wrist fingers elbow to draw and then in the second picture you can see a child dancing yes and what which part of her body is she using she is using her hip legs ankle wrist waist yes so all these parts are being used when she is dancing similarly in the third picture you see that a child is kicking a ball and the child is using his ankle his uh, knee and then the toes to kick the ball so when we do different types of activities different movement takes place in our body and that is why due to the internal structure of our body now what is movement movement is when the living organism moves a body part or parts without a change in the position of the organism now another term is look, uh, associated with movement that is called locomotion locomotion is when the movement of a part of the body leads to the change in the position and location of the organism so when organism by moving any part of the body moves from one place to another or changes its position is called locomotion there are different 
types of movement such as walking, running, crawling, creeping, slithering, skipping and so on. So all these types of movement are taking place due to the different organs and due to the different internal structure of our body. So I hope that all of you are clear with the, the difference between movement and locomotion. So in next class, we'll be discussing about movement in human body. So till then, thank you and have a great day.